Hey, today I'm going to draw a figure from a uh, draw, make a drawing of a figure from a photograph here. Um, and I decided I wanted to do it in color this time as opposed to just black and white. Uh, so let me talk about some of the materials I use um, when, I'm, when I make drawings. Um, I standardly like to use traditional materials. Uh, first and foremost, I'll use uh, willow charcoal. It's also called vine charcoal. Um, and what that is is a very, very light, basic, uh, uh, traditional charcoal medium. Um, um, when you draw with it, it actually lays out a very light line um, that can be very that can be erased easily um, and quickly as you lay it down. Um, it also it doesn't stick to the paper uh, as much as other uh, compressed charcoals do. The other type of charcoal I use, of course, is compressed charcoal. Um, I use uh, Alpha Color. I used to use Alpha Color. Actually, now I use a uh, uh, Blix brand uh, compressed charcoal right here's an old box of alpha color uh, that I still have but compressed charcoal you'll see is a uh, sort of a black rich dark compressed stick that will give you a nice rich black um, so I also like to work with that um, then uh, a lot of people will use a gum eraser that look like these, these little gum erasers as basics. I, I myself prefer the Stetler white, plast, uh, white plastic eraser. Um, this is a Stetler eraser right here, um, and it's, um, it's just a white eraser. It erases very cleanly, um, more cleanly than the uh, gum erasers. These sort of, a, or these sort of a kneaded eraser. This kneaded eraser, you actually have to pick up charcoal from the paper with the Stetler white eraser. It's the best eraser for simply erasing out uh, cleanly. All right. Um, a lot of times I'll use a chamois or a, a piece of, uh, of uh, cotton cloth fabric. Uh, you don't necessarily need to use a chamois itself. What a chamois is is a piece of uh, raw uh, cowhide. Um, so if you know, obviously, if you're vegetarian, you don't want to, or vegan, you don't want to be bothered with that. So just use a piece of uh, any any piece of rough material will work. A scrap of jean material, maybe. Um, if all you have is cotton fabric, that's fine too, or a rag. Uh, but this is how you can, uh, when you use your vine charcoal to lay out a preliminary drawing, you can wipe down the entire drawing really quickly and erase it out with one of these. Um, that's what it's used for. Along with the erasers, uh, sometimes I will use this. This is an eraser shield. Um, uh, it's made by Alvin, is the company. But um, this erasing shield is uh, what's used to, uh, to erase out any particular details. By a fine detail, obviously I can't get it with this large eraser, so I actually take one of these and you know, be able to get little specks uh, clean like a stencil in a sense. If you didn't have one of these or had trouble finding one of these, you could just use a piece of uh, um, like a uh, the cardstock paper, you know, something like that, uh, and cut little holes out in it, and then you can erase with it just the same. Just using like basically a stencil. All right. Uh, other materials, since I'm using color, I have two choices of what I use for color. The traditional uh, choice that I go with here, this is a nice beautiful old box uh, that I happen to have, this old wooden box that somebody gave me. It was for pastels, but it doesn't really contain any old wooden pastels in it. Um, uh, but what we actually do have in here is alpha color. I like to use alpha color compressed pastel sticks because it's very much like the compressed charcoal but in a full range of colors um, at a reasonable price as well um, uh, and that's what I use for basic pastels these are chalk pastels by the way not oil um, chalk pastels lend themselves to working with charcoal um, oil pastels are just another monster altogether um, I also have some compressed uh, some smaller compressed sticks and those are actually a uh, Prismacolor uh, new pastels uh, sticks. I like to use these. They're very very similar to the Conte crayon um, as well. Uh, Conte crayons are um, black usually and also sanguine in color. Uh, but these uh, new pastels by Prismacolor are uh, have a very similar consistency to a Conte crayon. So you can get a lot tighter detail with this. So I'll use these for detail uh, work and I'll use these for larger scale work. Um, this set of a uh, Alpha color, <laughs> alpha color pastels. Anyway, yep. 
Let's get started here. All right, when I like to start, I don't choose many colors to draw with. I'm not gonna sit here and uh, blast through the rainbow rainbow palette of colors, but I will choose colors that are similar um, in character to each other. Um, here's my photo that I'm working from. This is a lovely photo of my wife. Um, she's a natural as far as, um, uh, as, as, far as a uh, model. Um, here she has her hand just sort of wisping the, uh, the fabric away. She's dressed in a traditional ao yai from uh, Vietnam. She's Vietnamese. Um, Vietnamese American now. And uh, she, uh, um, there you can see she's dressed traditionally um, in the clothes. Uh, this makes a nice pose. Um, the photo itself is a little broad in. I'm going to give it a little bit more space around the head and a little bit more space around uh, where the feet would be. All right. Uh, but I'm going to set this pose to paper here. Um, I'm going to do it in color, but I'm not going to uh, use every color of the rainbow, obviously, in the picture. I see uh, a green, a lot of greens happening in here in the dress, um, and I might to use those except this is a sort of a creamier color green there's a lot of white influence in both her pants and her dress uh, the Aoyai itself and um, uh, I'm actually going to use a, a bit of a warmer one that's sort of a, a, a more yellow influence because I tend to like uh, uh, more vibrant colors you know as I use that and then there's also this red fan here which I may keep red as well because those are nice complements of each other but I'm also again I'm gonna choose a red that goes nicely with a uh, green that's more influenced by yellow than white um, all right as I work but first when I start out I'm gonna start out with my vine charcoal all right, so let's get started. Uh, as I'm looking at this picture, I'm laying out my figure here uh, within the space. So the first uh, drawing that happens is called uh, gesture drawing, all right? So I'm gonna simply gesture out my, my figure and the pose right here within the space and determine a size to give myself a little bit of head space at the top here. You don't want, you, you don't want your figure to run right to the edge of the paper. That's terrible composition. Uh, so we lay out the head first. I always start with the head when I'm drawing a full figure uh, just to get a basic head shape down. Um, and I try to work quickly as I'm going through this because I know I may have to erase it anyway uh, as I'm laying out this figure here and this gesture. Um, I don't like you working from photographs um, but most of the time I end up having to, all right? It's hard to get someone to sit and model for you. Um, it takes time out of their day. And uh, in this contemporary world that we live in, we certainly don't have a lot of people that don't have time on their hands or you have to hire them, which costs money. And a lot of people don't have money these days, particularly artists. Uh, but if you're lucky to get a model for yourself, always do with a model, all right? I'm doing this at all without no practice. I haven't, uh, haven't loosened up or did any practice sketches to prior to this uh, in a few days. So you can see I'm a little rough at it as I'm laying it out here, this figure. And there we go. That's about the shape and size. Um, and that's how fast it took me to lay out a, a quick gesture drawing of the figure. I'm not worrying so much about the dimensions yet on the figure. I'll work those out later, but I'm trying to get a gesture down or a pose within the space. And I see that my figure is a little bit too big for this space. So I'm going to have to take it down a notch in size. So at this point, I'll just take it out of there completely using the chamois to do that. Chamois, just like the sham wow guy. That's where the sham wow got its name from this thing, which is called a chamois. It's uh, spelled C-H-A-M-O-I-S. All the O-I-S is silent. 
Alrighty, so I laid out, I knocked out my figure. While doing that, I, I can still see a ghost image coming out back there, which is fine for me. I love to work with, I love to see the work in the paper itself, all right? While I'm doing this, I'm building up a tone in the background. So every time I erase and have to rechange the position or the size of something, um, it, I'm building up layers of tone in the background, which are gonna work and only help to make the drawing look more rich um, in itself. So uh, that's very important when working. All right, so let's start out. Uh, I like where the head was up here as far as its top being about right there. I also better put a mark in here for where I want it to end up. All right, so this is another way to start as well. Um, then I'm not so sure about its position here. I look over here, I can see a solid center right here that maybe should be in the center, but it all determines on what, how far over this is in the space and how far over this is in the space uh, as well. So if I can capture something, perhaps the width of the head, I can bring it over here and see, that's about a width of a head and a little bit more. And right over here, we got a little bit extra. So I'm right about placing it just slightly off to the right of the center of the paper, all right, when I lay the head out. Uh, and those are the sort of things you look for as you're doing your work. All right, there we go. Lay down another head here. You have a tendency, it's a bad habit, but we all have a tendency of following our old lines as we're drawing, working down, working our way down through our sketches, all right? You have to avoid that as much as you can. I realize I need to raise this arm a bit. It's a very stiff pose, um, not the loosest, very stiff and proper. Notice how I'm holding the charcoal too. I'm not holding it like a normal pencil at all. Um, uh, you don't. Uh, charcoal doesn't lend itself to working like pencil does. All right. Uh, so you give, sort of get used to holding it. If you've never worked with charcoal before, you'll find after a little while of working with it, it's a really nice material uh, because you can quickly lay out tone, tonal ranges as well as line just by pushing it, pushing it sideways. Uh, even you can knock out some sort of tonal shape happening in there all right so uh, that's important just like that all righty I think I have my figure down now I'm gonna speed this video up from here on out and uh, you're gonna simply just watch me draw today I'll stop at any time I need to uh, let you know about something as I'm working on the drawing.
Alrighty, so what you see, what you don't see in other videos is, is uh, people when they're drawing spending a lot of time looking. Um, it's very important. Um, not just looking while you're drawing, but to actually step back and see uh, what you have here, alright, overall. Because right away I, um, I think this is fairly correct as far as proportion in this area and this is sort of correct right in here but right in here we have an elongation happening where this is just too long right here um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to rearrange and change this up and bring it up to, uh, bring it up a bit all right um, things that I was doing while I was drawing by the way was um, the first step after you do the gesture drawing you want to uh, start uh, looking for proportions um, like that and what I did was I started uh, since I started with my head I used my head Head as a measurement, all right? Uh, it's sort of a visual cue almost um, as a measurement from the top to the bottom of the head. You could also do the same thing with the side of the head. If you think it's the head that you got right um, correct the first time you drew it, um, you can use that as your measurement system, all right? Uh, so you saw me mark off the photo even um, measuring out how many head spaces there are from here to here to there and then down to there and finding out and then even putting little marks on the photo itself to uh, figure out if I'm getting it in proportion correctly. Now overall I got the general height of it in proportion but what's happening here is it's elongated right in the center there so I do want to lift that up. Um, be, per be willing to make changes um, to your drawing. Uh, the best uh, people that, uh, the best artists that create are ones that are willing to Care, uh, freely just make changes when necessary, all right? Uh, there's no secret to it. It's just simply uh, they step back from the drawing and they can see their mistakes and instead of ignoring those mistakes and carrying on to a finished drawing that's incorrectly proportioned, they will go back and correct those mistakes in the drawing. Um, other things I was looking as I was working out the drawing are different anomalies in the drawing, things that are similarities, uh, like for example, this line here almost crosses straight with that line so I'm looking for that and I'm trying to sort of make that happen uh, throughout the drawing. There's a crossover right there. Uh, another thing is too getting angles. All right, you can use this, uh, your stick of charcoal, or if it's not too big, you could use a, a, a pencil, is what we consider a sighting stick, um, and lay out an angle on here. So in order to get this to be the correct angle right here on the shoulder, I'll actually rest it along with the charcoal there to make sure that it's correct. Just like this, carrying it over here, doing the same thing here with this angle right there, um, uh, this angle, which is very different, this angle here, I did it, as well as this one up here, all right? Uh, so that's another important thing to work out while you're drawing uh, is those angles. And you can see I'm throwing in tone with the side of the charcoal as I'm building up, all right? Uh, there's some shadow under the cloth here. Now I could be getting dangerously because at some point I'm gonna have to suggest shift to color, all right? Um, I don't wanna lay out too much black to get too much charcoal on the paper because if I do, my colors may turn out a bit muddy, all right? So be aware of that as you're drawing and uh, make the corrections as you uh, see, see that the corrections need to happen. All right, so that's what I'm going to do at this point. I'm going to shift this and bring this up a little bit.
at this point, I'm going to want to switch it up with some color. Um, I'm not making uh, what uh, I'm not. You, do, you don't want to necessarily finish it out in black and white if you are going to add color. And if I keep going with this, I with black charcoal, I'll make it. I'll run the danger of making it very muddy. All right. Uh, so one thing you want to do is you want to clean out some areas before you uh, before you add the color in because um, it will make it muddy. Um, notice the eraser itself. The, the eraser gets very dirty with charcoal. Um, so one way to clean it is actually to take it off of a rough surface. This surface of this wall happens to be rough enough. So you just sort of erase it off of that. And you'll see it cleans back to a white again. Very easy, very quickly. See, I can make a chisel shape out of the eraser eventually, a little point, fine point, that I'm able to uh, erase certain areas. Um, your eraser is, is, should be thought of like a drawing tool, all right? So think about, uh, you'll see that I've applied some charcoal and I pulled back and taken some charcoal out of certain areas, uh, again, using the eraser. Um, it's just like a brush, in a sense, uh, a paintbrush. You know, paints uh, light colors only. <laughs> But that's the way it works. So yeah, um, so anyway, that's another tip with it. Um, another thing I was thinking about mentioning while I was working on this drawing is uh, uh, another benefit to using vine charcoal or charcoal in general is you can use the side of the stick. Anytime you need to make a straight line, you just simply uh, um, just simply drag it along the side of the edge of the stick instead of actually uh, drawing it from the point end. So you, a lot of times you see me doing this, even with my left hand, my non-dominant hand, I can use charcoal and drag that line out straight. Um, and that way I get really nice, sharp, straight, clean lines. All right, uh, so, uh, um, yep, this time I'm going to continue when I start with my colors. I'm not going to think of my color as color in itself. I'm going to think about three different tones, all right? Uh, black or dark, mid-tone, and light, all right? And so when I choose my color, I look at the same sort of aspects about it. I'm going to choose a range of greens, um, uh, not just one green, uh, but a few to get what I'm looking for. Here we got a, a nice green compressed charcoal. Uh, here's a lighter green, and this is that sort of a, a lemon lime green that I'm looking for. All right, uh, that's got a bit more lemon in it, some yellow. So, uh, and then I'll go even as far as uh, pushing a bit of yellows on there. All right. So here's my range of tones, something like this uh, being my range for uh, the shirt, the aoyai, and the, uh, the the pants she's wearing. And also, um, I may want to uh, warm up the face a little bit, so I may use uh, something that's sort of a natural, sort of a lighter color for that. Here's a, here's a sort of a skin tone color. It's not too much of a transition from that green to that yellow to uh, that skin tone, all right? Uh, so they're almost within the same color palette. And that's the sort of thing you want to think about while you're, while you're choosing your color. Also, some reds, uh, by the way. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to grab some reds that will work along with this uh, green. So I want to have a complementary sort of uh, a complementary red. <coughs> to the particular green I'm working with. Um, and that would probably be about this one. How do you know what your colors, what colors go together really well? Well, when you take the uh, pastels themselves and put them up next to each other, you'll figure out, uh, you'll figure out what ones look good together. There's no secret to color, working with color and color choices. It's really your preferences, all right? Look at that green with that or that reddish orange, all right? They almost look like they're, they're meant to be together. At least that's my own personal preference, all right? So here's my general color direction that I wanna go with. Something that's sort of this complementary uh, red and green sort of idea, all right, for the drawing. Notice I haven't worried about the background. I'm not really concerned with the background. I may leave the background blank 
and the actual drawing. Um, there's all this work and area to the background that's already sort of building up an interesting surface to it. I'm not sure what I want to do with that yet, so I'll keep deciding while I keep drawing.
All right, as you see the drawing progressing right now, um, I'm switching off to a new material as well. Um, I have this, this is a uh, charcoal pencil, all right? Um, and uh, it's a 2B uh, hardness, which is a sort of sort of on the hard side. Um, sometimes it, uh, as you tighten up your drawing and you're working details into it, um, you're going to need something to get into the small little spaces like this. Um, I either like to use this or I also like to use this Prismacolor ebony pencil. Now the ebony pencil itself is graphite. Um, it's not charcoal. Um, so uh, that'll make a difference. This will give me a a, a solid but lighter line uh, that's more attuned to my mine charcoal. Um, the charcoal pencil will actually give me a, um, a nice black. All right, so this is what you want to use to sharpen it with. This is a uh, handheld pencil sharpener. It's uh, made by Alvin, that company. Um, and uh, it's just this little simple uh, aluminum sharper sharpener with two holes in it all right the first hole the smaller hole is for standard pencils the larger hole which makes a fatter conical shape is for ebony pencils uh, charcoal pencils um, as well as colored pencils all right um, anything that has a soft lead that can break easily you want to sharpen it with a large hole in the pencil sharpener um, just a note like that and it'll give you a sharper point with a conical, uh, a more fatter conical edge to it. Okay, so I'm gonna continue working on this. Um, and you'll see that this is a new material that I added into the mix. Also, when I get into working with tight detail, I'm gonna be using my erasing shield and my eraser um, along with the eraser because uh, some of those little particular places I may need to erase to clean out, um, the only way you can get it is by getting in detail. So you use this sort of like a stencil, like I said before, uh, to be able to cut in there and pull out some real details, all right?
That's it for this, uh, this drawing. I think it's finished. Um, I'm gonna sit with it for a while, uh, probably till tomorrow, so uh, look at it again uh, with a new fresh light, and uh, then I'll determine for sure that it's finished. Um, but uh, overall, I'm, I'm quite happy with how the results turned out uh, with this drawing. Um, I kept the face fresh. I didn't, you saw how I went through there with all the details of the shadows and the subtleties going through the uh, dress, uh, but I never went back to the face because I was very happy with that looseness. You want to keep a sort of a, a, a freshness about it. Um, my worries are if I were to go back in there and really delve into some details and shadows in there, it may look overworked. 
you never want your drawings to look overworked, all right? Um, so I left it at that, um, leaving it with a nice open background to it. Uh, notice there's nothing in the background at all, except for all the eraser marks that I made. Um, you know, all the changes and adjustments that I made to the drawing are still there. Um, and there, that's what's beautiful about it. It's like, a, it keeps it fresh in a sense. I'm happy with it. That's it.